Got a dentist appointment at 2.30. Got some big teeth. I wonder how much they weigh. That's right, today we're talking about molar mass. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shoe Fu Kaminacha. I'm your host, Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So in the last episode, we talked an awful lot about how to convert between moles and molecules. And in today's episode, we're going to learn how to convert between moles, molecules, and grams. So let's get started. Molar mass, a lesson from the formulas and equations unit. Intro. Let's say that we have one mole of two different substances, maybe an element or a compound. We automatically know that the two substances must have an equal number of molecules. That's Avogadro's number. Hey, I just met you. times 10 to the 23rd. However, because the substances are different, the masses must be different. So as you can see up here, we have three different samples of matter. We've got one mole of zinc, one mole of aluminum, and one mole of potassium chloride. Now, each one is one mole, which means they all have the same number of particles, whether they be atoms of these two metals or compounds here in KCl, it's all one mole. But looking at the samples themselves, you can see they're different sizes and they have different masses. So even though they're all the same number of particles in one mole, they're all gonna have a different mass. Definition. The molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So its units are grams per mole. It is found mathematically the same way as formula mass or gram formula mass. I want you to think of the formula mass as the mass of one molecule or atom, whereas the molar mass is the mass of one mole of that atom or molecule. Conversions using molar mass. When we convert between moles and molecules, we use a set conversion factor involving Avogadro's number. Hey, I just met you. When we convert between moles and grams, the conversion factor varies by chemical formula when we find the molar mass. So taking a look at our graphic here, if you want to go from mass of an element or compound to moles, you're going to use molar mass, and that's going to vary by compound. If you have different compounds, you'll have different molar masses. If you want to go from moles into particles, you'll always use Avogadro's number. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. Notice there's no direct arrow from mass of an element or compound to the number of particles. So if you are asked to go from mass into particles or particles into mass, you will always have to convert into moles first. All right, let's do an example. You ready, Fu? I am. Find the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Let's start by writing down the chemical formula for carbon dioxide. All right, well, that's a pretty easy one. I see prefixes. It's just carbon and two oxygens, CO2. Good, next we're gonna find the molar mass. Mathematically, this is the same as the gram formula mass, but we're just gonna use the units grams per mole instead. All right, so carbons, oxygens, I have one carbon and two oxygens. We're gonna multiply that times their atomic masses. Carbon is 12.01. I'm gonna use grams per mole though, Good. right? Yep. So grams per mole. Um, oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. And let's multiply those out. That'll still be 12.01 grams per mole. And 32. Oh, grams per mole. Good, let's add those up to get our molar mass in grams per mole. 44.01 grams per mole. Now, even though we found this mathematically, this actually represents the conversion factor we might use in a dimensional analysis problem. So let's actually write this out in two different ways as a conversion factor, representing the number of grams in a mole and the number of moles in the correct number of grams. All right, so I can keep it in the same order for the first one. So Good, let's just write it out. 44.01 grams per one mole. Good, so if we're specifically talking about CO2, there's always 44.01 grams per one mole. Now let's go the other way. Okay, so then just flip it, right? Yeah, just flip it. So one mole, 
must be 44.01 grams. Good, and depending on the problem, we might use one or the other as a conversion factor. Okay. All right, we have another example. Are you ready, Fu? I am. Okay, how many moles of carbon dioxide are contained in 155 grams? All right, what's given to us in this problem? Okay, so our given is the 155 grams. Good, and what are we trying to find? Trying to find how many moles of carbon dioxide. Very good, let's write down what we're given first. All right, so 155 grams of CO2. Good, we got that label there. All right, we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. We just okay. talked about this with the last example. Let's get our units to cancel out. What unit should be in the denominator? Grams of CO2. Good, and the unit we're converting to on top should be? Moles of CO2. Good, let's get those numbers in. What number goes with moles? Uh, one. One, and what is our molar mass for carbon dioxide that goes in the denominator for grams? 44.01. Again, that's from the previous example. We already found the molar mass. All right, we're gonna okay. divide here and we're gonna round to three sig figs. Okay, so 3.52 to three sig figs. Uh, let's see, grams of CO2 cancel out, so moles. Good, moles of CO2, moles good job. CO2. You try number one. Convert 5.36 moles of carbon dioxide to grams. Be sure to use dimensional analysis. All right, let's do another example. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, how many molecules are contained in 16.3 grams of carbon dioxide? So let's figure out what we're given here. All right, we've got 16.3 grams of carbon dioxide given. All right, what are we looking for? And it says how many molecules? All right, let's write down our given. Okay, so 16.3 grams CO2. Good, now we're gonna set up our next conversion factor but let's just take a moment and look at the back of our reference tables. Oh, okay. Just a reminder, we have mole equalities on the back there. And on the back, not only do you have that it's 6.02 times 10 to 23rd molecules or particles, we also have that one mole is the gram formula mass. Okay, so it's not like a set number, but it reminds me that I'd have to find the gram formula mass to know it was equivalent to one mole. Exactly. All right. All right. So let's set up our first conversion factor here. All right. So we want grams to cancel out. So what are we going to put in the denominator? So grams of CO2 in the bottom. Good. Now we want to get to molecules, but remember in that diagram, there was no direct arrow from grams to molecules. All right. So I really only know how to convert grams to moles. So I'd have to do that first. So moles of CO2 on top. Good. So let's get the numbers in there for CO2. All right. Well, it should just be one mole. And I know from before, the molar mass of CO2 is 44.01, so that goes in the denominator. Good, so let's uh, see what unit we're dealing with now. The grams are out. Looks like we've got moles right now. All right, so let's set up one more conversion factor here. All right, so I want moles of CO2 in the bottom to cancel out again. Good, and we can now get two molecules. All right, because I do know how to go from moles to molecules. All right. So what numbers are we going to put in here for this final conversion factor? All right, so for molecules, that's Avogadro 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And again, for mole, we just get one there. All right, so some math here. we got some numbers on top and bottom, so you got to be careful. So you multiply the 16.3 by the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Then we divide by 44.01. And what I get for my answer here is to three sig figs again, 2.23 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, let's look at our units. All right, moles are out. Final unit would be molecules of CO2. Perfect. You try number two. Convert 4.6 times 10 to the 24th molecules of carbon dioxide to grams. Make sure you show all dimensional analysis, pay attention to units and sig figs. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on molar mass. It's been emotional. Just let you Today's episode is brought to you by It may not be butter, but you'd bother to believe it.
But we never off, we zone to the break of dawn S-E-I-E-N-C-E in the hall, they call S-Wing You know we never wear a tie Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye Like, like this, that, and this, and a It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a It's like this You're going in low power mode Plug in chill to the next episode